Hello, everybody. A very warm welcome to Hockenheim. In just a few minutes' time, we'll get underway with the first of two 45-minute free practice sessions here. The first time the DTM cars go onto the circuit here at Hockenheim for what is the penultimate weekend of the season. And we're into the last, what, 10 days of the championship now because we've got back-to-back -back weekends to round out this fascinating 2021 season from Hockenheim. We'll head more or less straight across to the Norris Ring, down to the south of Germany and to the the Nuremberg Street Circuit for the final two races of this season. So we've had six events so far. This is the seventh here at Hockenheim. Coming up tomorrow, we'll have the 13th round of the championship, round 14 on Sunday. And then those last two races of the season where, honestly, anything could happen. It's going to be wide open. This is how the championship standings now look. Liam Lawson, having moved back into the championship, leads had a phenomenal couple of weekends at the Red Bull Ring in particular, but also at Assen. He's had uh, four straight podium finishes. He's 10 points clear of Marco Wittmann. He's also having a superb season, looking for his third championship title. Kelvin van der Linde has been struggling a little bit of late. He's had some bad fortune, but 160 points is still in the championship fight. Uh, we've got 112 points still available in the championship. Four races, 25 points per race win available. Uh, plus, uh, for qualifying sessions where you can pick up another three points for pole position in each of those, uh, that gives you the extra 12 points. Potentially, 112 points up for grabs then. And uh, that means mathematically the top seven in the championship uh, can still uh, win this uh, season. There is how uh, the team standings uh, look and uh, looking uh, to extend their lead further after a great couple of weekends. Red Bull A, of course, and 279 points. Team Abt Sports Line uh, got full car lineup this weekend, 221 points. And then Mercedes Team Winwood having a very strong season, third on 205 points with uh, Lucas Auer uh, picking up his first victory of the season. A very fine drive in race two at Alassane Al last time out a couple of weeks ago in the Netherlands. Uh, so I'm Chris Hartley. I'm going to talk you through all of the action this weekend here at Hockenheim. And that's pretty similar to the view I get from the commentary box here overlooking the... Uh, e Turn 17 here in the circuit, which heads then onto this start-finish straight opposite me. On the other side of the uh, straight, you can see uh, the teams hovering uh, around the garages. The car's still in the garages, getting ready to come out momentarily and head on to what's a very sunny circuit, as you can see. Uh, I have to say, oftentimes we come here at the end of the season at Hockenheim. I know it's not the last round of the season, but we're still you know, just about into October. fields and farms and they're out harvesting session at the moment. will start in one minute and 30 seconds we will wait one minute and the wind is coming from the north it means tailwind going to turn one but we are talking about uh, five or six kph really low did you change something on the radio because the quality is very good it's really good it's best it's been the whole year copy perfect <laughs> Oh, well, they've got there in the end. Uh, penultimate round of the season. Calvin says, oh, the radio's working now. It's much clearer than it has been. A little bit of uh, info on the, the wind there, the direction of it, but it's a very low wind, five or six kilometres an hour. Uh, so a bit of a tailwind down to turn one, but not uh, a great deal to... Uh, now lined up and ready to go. Uh, there, Mike Rockefeller, teammate to Kelvin van der Linde, who's now... I mean, being the driver that's been chased for most of the season, the driver doing the chasing. That's Philip Ellis, who's a very strong first season in DTM, fifth in the championship. That uh, excellent race win at the Lazitz Ring, the second weekend of the season. But he's picked up five podiums across the course of the year. He's one of the drivers carrying our onboard camera uh, this weekend. Great chap, Philip Ellis. Very strong uh, racer as well. And uh, glad to see him have such a good first season in the championship. So how will the cars fare in this uh, session with uh, Audi's perhaps having been on the back foot over the last couple of weekends at the Red Bull Ring and Aston Ferrari's definitely haven't been on top, especially at Spielberg. I have an interesting conversation with uh, Esme Hawkey, who drives the T3, one of the T3 Motorsports uh, Lamborghinis at Aston last time. I talked about that uh, turnaround they've had because they're much more competitive at Aston than they were at Red Bull Ring. And, of course, they had Marco Bortolotti coming into the team to score the team's and the manufacturer's first uh, podium in the DTM 
Aras, and his experience definitely helped. But as we said, actually, you know, I think one of the things that was holding us back was uh, the fact that uh, with the undulations that you get, it's a high elevation at Spielberg at the Red Bull Ring up in the, uh, the hills and the mountains. It really wasn't working particularly well for the normally aspirated cars, for the turbo-powered cars. Perhaps they had a bit of an advantage there. It's an interesting thought that she offered. As her teammate, Esteban Moot, heading out onto the circuit. So we'll see. Uh, we've got two guest drivers in this weekend, or two additional drivers. One of them's a stand-in driver, one of them's a guest uh, driver. But uh, Hubert Haupt's come back in for a second weekend in the uh, championship. And the HRT Mercedes, it's his team that he runs. But he's also a very experienced racer himself. He's been now in all three iterations of the uh, DTM. So he comes back in. Uh, we're running the number six HRT Mercedes. And you've also got uh, former Formula E champion Lucas de Grassi, the Brazilian, coming in this weekend with uh, Amp Sports Line, a long-term uh, works driver for Audi. Uh, podium finisher on multiple occasions at the Le Mans 24 hours, a front runner in the World Endurance Championship. Formula E champion, 12 times a Formula E winner with uh, Audi. Had seven great years together and as a farewell present, uh, he's been given this opportunity to come and race in the DTM. So he'll be the number 37 Amp Sports Line Audi. And no doubt he'll be quick. He was actually here testing recently. Mike Rockenfeller and Kelvin van der Linde came for uh, a test as well in the car. So we'll see more of him shortly, no doubt. But remember, as a uh, guest driver coming in for your first weekend in DTM, you get five sets of Michelin slick tyres to use over the two free practice sessions, the two qualities and the two races. Conversation that's that was a tourist. Philip Ellis talking you uh, around a lap as he drives here at Hockenheim, just giving you a bit of uh, okay, insight. Okay, thanks, Philip. I think we could hear you. Everything fine. Feedback to his engineer as well. Uh, car under investigation is Marco Wittmann. That's for crossing the white line on the pit entry, so cutting across a bit too sharply to come back into the pit. So that is being uh, looked at by the officials. So Philip Ellis underway. Yeah. But I was saying... Uh, Five sets of tyres when you come in for your first DTM weekend. That's two more sets than everybody else gets. You perhaps a guest driver, but he's already had one weekend, so he's on three sets as well. So that means he's got the opportunity to use a brand new set of tyres in one of these free practice sessions. And he'd still have four sets to go through two qualifying and two races. So sometimes you see guest drivers coming in, and you know, he will be quick anyway, I'm sure, but uh, going very quickly. We've got a red flag, potentially. Yes, we have. Red flag. So just looking from the commentary box, see if we can spot why that might be. Nothing at turn one. Nothing coming into the final complex that I can see, but red flag stopping the uh, session for now. And another car under investigation uh, is Alex Alban for pit lane speeding. 
There's the view to one of the areas where all the action tends to, or a lot of the action tends to happen down into that hairpin. Start of the lap, this, well, not halfway, it's kind of halfway around the lap, really. I fly down to it, but the spit scare at the hairpin. Turn six, flat out through the parabolica just before that. It's an immense corner, the left hander, sweeping left hander, takes huge speed into the hairpin, then it's on the brakes. You could dive down the inside, but run wide quite often if you do that. And so you often see cars together going into the corner, but still together coming out of it. And it's all about setting it up then for that right hander that follows at turn seven. So, but uh, there is always a lot of great action down at that hairpin. It's one of the big, big overtaking opportunities here. Right. So this is the reason why I've had a breakdown. And looks like Nico Muller has stopped out on the circuit. Oh dear, his fortune seems to be all bad at the moment, doesn't it, Nico Muller? It's not been a good season for the team that uh, won the championship for the last two seasons against Nico when he was racing for App Sports Line with Rene Rast, three times uh, a champion in the DTM. And so Nico, I think it's Nico, is it Dev? in the car and that's already been pulled off to the side of the circuit the recovery truck is there ready to collect the Audi and take it back I suppose you can have a problem now is the time for it to happen but you just be thinking come on <laughs> wanting to get all the cobwebs out wanting to forget about all the bad luck that we've had as a team over the last uh, well most of the season really and misfortunes and not getting the car right wanted to at least have a good couple of uh, weekends to round out the season but this is not the way you would like things to start so a red flag in the session the clock does continue to tick down it would stop if it was a uh, qualifying session but it uh, does uh, carry on so you can see that on your graphic top right corner it carries on Calvin van der Linde amongst those making his way back into the bits you can just see him opposite the commentary box you're on board with him now and behind him, also still making his way back towards the, uh, the pits. And the Rover Racing BMWs. You can see the Sheldon van der Linde. Or Timo Glock. It's Sheldon, because Timo's just come into the pits opposite me, so the two van der Linde's fairly close together on circuit. Well, not many got a lap in there, and not many got a competitive lap time in. But Kelvin van der Linde, at least for now, has topped the times with a 1 minute 40.7. Uh, but there's still more time to come. Argemini had set the absolute best first sector time. Van der Linde, Mike Rockenfeller, Nico Muller, and Sophia Florsch. Uh, Muller's back, so it's Dev Gore. 3.7, but uh, not, I mean, not more than half of the field has... Uh, has at least set a time lap, and uh, no one other than Kelvin has come close to what the lap times are to be expected at this stage. So Marco Vittman in, confirmation that when he had really one half decent lap, that was from Kelvin van der Linde, but nobody else has gone quickly and set a meaningful lap time yet. Uh, so not, not Nico Muller, Dev Gore, his teammate. And the other Rosberg Audi was the one that stopped out on the circuit and uh, the car being recovered back. He'll be given a lift back to the pits, but uh, whether we'll be able to get back out in the session uh, is questionable with only 30 seconds. So Marco Wittmann uh, back in. He'd just gone out to try and set a lap, but hadn't actually got all the way around to the, uh, the finish of the lap. So uh, we've only had 11 of the cars that have recorded a time so far. Uh, but of those uh, 11, you've only really got three kind of meaningful-ish times. Kelvin van der Linde, Mike Rockefeller and Nico Muller, the 140s and 141s. So what uh, role will Alex Albon play this weekend? He is 71 points behind the championship lead. There's still 112 points up for grabs, so he can still win the DTM title. But of course, the driver that he's 71 points behind is his teammate, Liam Lawson, uh, in the uh, number 30 AF Corsa Ferrari there, the Red Bull Bat machine. So will Alex think, right, I can still win this and try and do his best for the weekend? Or will he have a, a role to play in supporting uh, Liam this weekend for uh, Marco Wittmann? He's solo in the Volkenhorst team, so he's got to do it all on his own. He's, he's second in the championship. For Kelvin van der Linde, uh, he's 
that nearest teammate in terms of points is Mike Rockenfeller, who's in eighth place. But Mike is 113 points adrift of the championship lead. So he's mathematically out of it now. So you would expect, and we've already seen this at uh, Assen, <laughs> Mike trying to help Kelvin van der Linde. So Hubert Haupt uh, there in the Playboy liveried uh, Mercedes HRT uh, team with Vance on Abril and... Max got Scar there. Max he got still a very much a championship contender in fourth place in the standings. 20 points adrift is all. 155 points he's got. 20 points behind with 112 still available. Five podiums, just the one race win this year. Race wins this year. I've had three each now for Liam Lawson and Kelvin van der Linde. Two wins for Marco Wittmann and one win each for Max Gotts, Philip Ellis, Alex Alban and also for Lucas Auer last time out. There's the Gap in the garage where Dev Gore's number 12 machine should be. The Audi, though, still on its way back on a flatbed. Uh, now, uh, we've also had a number of other drivers under investigation for crossing the white line on the pit entry. So a few of them have been at it. One of them is uh, Nico Muller. Another is Mike Rockenfeller. We've also had a similar warning uh, coming out for Hubert Houts and for Sheldon van der Linde. So... Uh, Marco Wittmann was the first to get that, but there's been another four at least that have uh, taken it up. And were, we were looking at uh, a potential infringement from Alex Alban for speeding in the pit lane, but the message has come up on the screen that there's no further action on that one. So they're looking at it, but they've checked it, and Alex was fine. So no problems there. So there are quite a few fans coming here early, working from home today on Friday, I guess, and uh, watching a bit of the action here on the free practice day ready for the main two days uh, tomorrow where I'm sure that uh, grandstand of the grandstands uh, here I'm looking the exit to the final turn are going to be absolutely uh, packed right cars being released back out onto the circuit so we've lost about five or six minutes all told although they've got to do another warm-up lap and there Lucas de Grassi going through shot the Ravenel liveried yellow red and green Ad Sports Line Audi. There, Liam Lawson, Timo Glock, number 16, Kelvin van der Linde, number 3, Esteban Moutini, number 10, Lamborghini, all heading out onto the circuit. A couple of landmark results at Assen last time out with Sophia Florsch scoring her first DTM points. Ninth place, her best result to date. That was in race one at Assen. And 11th place, Resmi Hawkey, but with guest drivers ahead, uh, she uh, did get uh, promoted up in terms of points scored to two points. So finished 11th, but two of the drivers ahead of her were guest drivers. Don't score points if you're a guest driver, and therefore she got the points for ninth. So uh, those two drivers getting their first points of the season at Assen. Ironically, having come together in that race as well, uh, quite a bit of damage to uh, both of the cars, but the limped on as we went into the gravel trap. Sophia had damage to her car, which she said to me after the race was uh, not handling well. She was dragging it around the corners, really. Steering was all over the place, and Esme from a long back, way back almost caught her up at the end of the race, but uh, in the end, Sophia held on to the position. So cars heading back out. This 45-minute session there, Lucas uh, de Grassi, a very welcome addition to the grid. Some star drivers coming in this season. Michael Amamula, Mirko Bortolotti, Christian Kleen, who's done a very good job in the events that uh, he's taken part in. in the JP Motorsports uh, McLaren, Marcus Winkelhoff, Lucas Stoltz, all coming in as guest drivers. Christopher Haas is a replacement driver, so he did score, or could have scored uh, championship points, but he did get one point when he came in at the Nürburgring. So it's been a very healthy first season of this new era of DTM in terms of the number of drivers, cars, teams, manufacturers that we've uh, had involved in the championship. Mercedes leading in terms of the brand's uh, classification by a long way, actually. Got 426 points. Ferrari have got 279 in second place. Third on 278, just a point behind her Audi. So it's very close for second and third. BMW on 228, fourth and Lamborghini, 44 points in fifth position. Uh, we said the Drivers and Teams Championship. There's also a junior championship for the uh, younger drivers involved, and Liam Lawson is romping that along. The New Zealand has got 162 points. Sheldon van der Linde has got 50 and is second, so he's got three times the points to the next driver, Liam Lawson. And Esteban moved third on 37 points. There's Arjun Miney then, first ever Indian driver in DTM. 
things had been really on a network trajectory for him uh, up until Hassan, where he didn't uh, have the best in the play of the weekend, didn't score any points there, but the previous four races, he'd scored points in three of the four. Got his first championship point in race one at the Nürburgring, got his best qualifying in qualifying one at the Red Bull Ring, qualified in third place, and then brought it home to a top six finish. He's actually a little disappointed, I think, not to have got the podium, but it was a very good drive nonetheless to sixth place. And he followed that up with a seventh place finish in Austria uh, the following day. And he's got top the times for now. Uh, so into the 139s now for four of the drivers. These are the first competitive times that we've had in the session, really. And it's uh, Arjun, who was, remember, going well before the red flags came out. He's done a 139.133. That's a tenth up on Philip Ellis. He's done a 139.236. Mike Rockefeller, 139.565 is third. Fourth, Calvin van der Linde, 139.655, just 90 thousandths of a second behind his teammate, Vatsan Abril, uh, also to the 139s now with a 139.89. Hubert Haupt, 139.928, and has just, uh, Vatsan Abril has just set the absolute best first sector of the lap with a 21.7, slightly quicker than Arjun Mine, who's also in a good lap. Uh, but only by three hundredths of a second. So, in fact, Mike Rockenfeller, Sheldon van der Linde, both very good first sectors as well, both in the 21.8, the best middle sector so far. There's a 45.6 set by Arjun Miney last time round. Nico Muller's gone to the top of the times now, though, with a 138.915. So, Nico, who has been going well in the practice sessions in the last couple of events, but then it's all sort of gone away from him. With you know, mad luck here and there in, in qualifying, quite getting the rub of the green there. Uh, but Arjun's gone better than his previous best in the middle sector now. So absolute best in sector two, 45.448 seconds for Arjun. So can he find two tenths of a second to get himself back to the top of the times in this first free practice session? About to find out because he's almost home and dry. Comes out of the last corner now. Sudkerber sprints for the line over the grid hatchings. He goes, and it is the best time of the session so far for Arjun. 138.766. So that was almost four tenths quicker than his previous best lap. Mike Rockenfeller's put a decent effort in as well with the 138.775. That's only nine thousandths of a second adrift. But we've got Nico Muller on another quick lap. Absolute best in sector one, personal best in sector two, less than a tenth down. And uh, Nico Muller, we know, has been very quick at the end of the lap as well. The middle sector is the longest sector. Uh, it's 21.7 seconds, sector one, 45.4 for sector two, and then 31.2 for sector three. So you've got to get the middle run through the uh, twisty bits right. And Muller comes through and will put himself back to the top of the times with a 138.597. There he goes. Uh, Nico on a charge, he's not going to worry about championship points anymore, just trying to go out there and get some trophies, get some wins and really get the team back on form here if he can over the last couple of weekends of the season. And you're always going to get drivers like that because we all focus on the championship contenders. But for the others, it's almost a bit of a release. You know, we're not involved in the championship anymore, so we're just going to go for wins, go for it. And that can sometimes have an effect on the championship itself. One of the contenders for the title, as I said, is Max Gotts. He's put his best lap of the session in so far to go into sixth place with a 139.5, just over a second away, though, from Nico Muller's time. It's Muller from Miney, Rockenfeller third, Kelvin van der Linde in fourth, Philip Ellis still fifth, Max Gotts sixth, Sheldon van der Linde best BMW in seventh, Alex Alban best Ferrari in eighth, and then Lucas Auer and Hubert Hout ninth and tenth at the moment. Hubert having a good run here so far. She's got up to sixth place as well, with his best lap of the session so far. So Hubert Hout 139.5 gets himself to within nine tenths of a second of the fastest time of the session. Rocky does another decent lap, 138.9, a couple of tenths away from his very best, but impressive stuff. Kelvin van der Linde is down to fourth place at the moment but uh, just did his best lap of the session last time around. 138.9, absolute best in sector one he is. Lucas de Grassi, right, what can he do? He hasn't put a flying lap in yet, crosses the line, first attempt, puts him fifth. Audi's looking strong so far. There are four of the top five places. Anyone that's in there that's not an Audi is Arjun Miney in second place. We've got Muller, Miney, Rockenfeller, Kelvin van der Linde, Lucas de Grassi as your top five. So welcome to DTN, Lucas. 139.073, most successful Brazilian ever here at the level 24 hours. Four podium finishes in that, all with Audi and Team Jost. And winner of the first ever Formula E race as well. Lots and lots of experience in single seaters as well. Three years in GP2, lost out to the title 
to Timo Glock before they both went on to move into Formula One. Only one season with the Virgin Racing team in F1 for Lucas de Grassi and went on to become the Marussia team. He did, uh, was the official test uh, driver for Pirelli for Formula One tyres as well for a time. But uh, never quite got the Formula One career perhaps deserved. There we go. First message of the weekend for track limits. That goes to Lucas de Grassi. Uh, has to he has to respect the track limits at turn one, it says on the screen. Uh, and surprise, surprise, it's turn one because that's where it always is at the Nord Curva. There's so much time at runoff area there now. It is very easy to uh, run wide and keep the power down these days. It's on a better lap than previous. It's only uh, 0.47 seconds away from the fastest time of the session so far. So this could get him up into the top three. There's a really good final sector. He might just get to the top of the times. Let's see. Fourth. So gains one position, moves ahead of Kelvin van der Linde, his teammate for the weekend. So you've now got 138.597 for Nico Muller. He's well out, clear now, nearly two tenths ahead of everybody else. Arjun Miney, Mike Rockefeller, Lucas de Grassi, all in the 138.7s. 138.9 for Kelvin van der Linde. And they're the only drivers to break the 139 barrier thus far. Philip Ellis is in the pits now. He's sixth with a 139.2. Alex Alban is seventh, also with a 139.2. Max Gotts, eighth, 139.3. 139.3 for Hubert Haupt in ninth. Sheldon van der Linde, 139.5. Tenth and almost a second adrift of the best time of the session. And Nico Muller did a fairly long run here as he sets up for the race. We know how good he is at looking after his tyres. And uh, down at the hairpin at the moment. So that's a good first set to time again, 21.69. It's only just a few hundreds away from the best sector one time, which belongs to Kelvin van der Linde. First sector takes you down through Parabolica and ends just before you get to the hairpin. Taking in sector two narrow, turns eight and nine, that infield section. Almost a 90 degree right hander through turn 10 onto the back straight and coming in towards the uh, final sequence of corners, which begins with turn 12, the mobile one curver. Comes into my sight now. Up in and amongst the grandstands, carries a great amount of speed on the way into the left-hander at turn 13. That little jink then, almost quick S-bend section through 14 and 15, and then into uh, 16 and 17. Almost a double apex corner, it's just a very short link straight between the final two right-handers. Exit there is crucial. Another nice lap from Nico Muller goes across the line, and that one is a 138.777. Uh, which in itself would have been good enough for fourth place. Not as good as his best, but he's keeping the speed going. Matt Scott's a couple of tenths down in the first sector. 46.1 in the middle sector. Well, Arjun Miney's middle sector, 45.4 is the best, so he's seven tenths down there. And three tenths down in the third sector, Muller. So the lap started OK, and he lost seven tenths in the middle sector. And, well, well roughly half. And that lap does a 139.5, which is a second down. Carries on. And, well, I reckon he just extracted the most he could out of the car at Assen. Was there or thereabouts. He was on the fringe of the battles for podium position. But never quite, apart from for a few laps in race one, was able to get involved. And he was the virtual leader for a little while, but he just lost two places in quick succession. And after that, he couldn't quite get back into the fight. The same was true on Sunday. But as he always does, he bagged the points. Consistency is key. And at the end of the year, nobody cares how many races you've won, just whether you were champion or not. Timo Glock looks like he's had a moment. So he's uh, just coming back out onto the circuit. And yeah, you can see the dust settling. That was on the run down into turn 13. Oh, so easy to get it wrong through turn 12 on the exit. It's a very quick right hand at the mobile one curver. Almost 90 degrees and not much room for error. If you run wide there, the speed just takes you into the gravel trap. Daniel Ancadez just put his best lap of the session in so far. Very unlucky not to get a podium last time out at Aston when he got a puncture just a couple of minutes from the end of the race. But there's no doubt about it, Group M have started to make progress since race two at Spielberg in terms of their setup. And there was the moment that Timo 
ran wide through the gravel trap onto the grass. Got it back on the trap, though, crucially, and we'll take it back now for a clean-up down in the garage. So quite a few cars in the pit lane now. Nico Muller is one of them, and we had a pretty long run there. Uh, he's done nine laps. Most of them have done nine or ten laps. Question mark over SB Hawkey, who hasn't yet completed a full lap. So the Lamborghini has been on track, but it's never been all the way around. It's come back into the pits. So she hasn't registered a lap time yet. Dev Gore, we know brought about the red flags. Still hasn't reappeared on the circuit. Uh, but a uh, bit of a worry about the T3 Motorsport Lamborghini of Esme Hawkey. Somebody that's trying to learn all the circuits on the calendar this year, with the exception of Monza. She wants to get out there and get as much time behind the wheel of the car as she can. So Muller is quickest, Miney second, Rockenfeller is out on track, is third, Degrassi fourth, Muller, Miney and Degrassi all in the pits at the moment, Kelvin van der Linde fifth, Philip Ellis sixth, Alex Alban seventh, and then it's Gotts Haupt and Sheldon van der Linde to round out the top ten. He'd spun actually before we got into the gravel trap, so it was Timo Glock spinning actually on the tarmac. It was beautifully controlled though, wasn't it? Really good uh, recovery. It wasn't, as you often see here, just an understeering moment, just drifting into the gravel trap and then going into the spin. It was the spin beforehand. He knew what was coming, so I think he oversteered the car, tried to turn away from the gravel trap, and that sent the back end around at low speeds. Car five has to respect the track limits now at turn one, so Vance on Abril being kept an eye on here with just over 18 minutes to go in the session. important qualifying session it's going to be tomorrow morning as well of 20 minutes to set the grid although it is a circuit uh, where you can certainly overtake here at Hockenheim so it's not the be all and end all but you do get the sense that those 12 points that are still available for qualifying over the next two weekends just get a sense that they might make a difference at the end of the year so on board the Ferrari Liam Lawson currently 15th best lap of 140.1 one and a half seconds adrift but we saw this a few times of late in particular Aston where he wasn't really there at all in free practice he was setting the car up he wasn't worried about being at the top of the times but then he would bang in a lap pretty close to the end of the session so no need to worry or panic just yet for your Liam Lawson fans not just about getting a quick lap time today it is about the long game and having a car that you understand that you know how long it's going to run on the tires that you know how the tires evolve and develop as the race goes on so you can work out your pit stop strategy for the race which is also going to be a crucial part of the race weekend here but what a superstar Liam Lawson has been another points finish in his most recent Formula 2 race very busy period for him now. This uh, twin program that he's got in FIA Formula 2 and in DTM. We'll have to wait to see what he's going to do next year, but uh, I certainly think if he was to come back and have another season in Formula 2, which is a difficult, very difficult championship to come into and be successful in first time. He's done a good job. He's up there in the top 10 of the points and uh, he's already been a race winner. First weekend, first go at it, he was a winner. Consistent point scorer. And if we were to come back and have another year in F2 next year, I'm sure it would be a real championship contender. We'd, of course, absolutely love to have him back in the DTM as well. But we'll see. It's been a pleasure to have him, though, the 19-year-old from Hastings. In he comes. And the Red Bull AF Corsa team, Amato Ferrari, is very experienced. That team have uh, looked after him well. He's got a really, seems to have a really, really strong rela relationship with the team as well. He's got his speed. They've got their experience and knowledge that have been able to uh, pass on to him. The team's based in uh, Piacenza, which is just south of Milan, only about 80 kilometres from Monza, established by Amato Ferrari, himself a racing driver for a, a while. He retired pretty young, but concentrating on being a, a team manager. Set up the team back in 1995 when he was only 28. DTM debut for the team this year, but... Uh, They've scored three class wins at the Le Mans 24 hour. They won six teams and drivers' titles, uh, as well as five manufacturer titles for Ferrari in the FIA World Endurance Championship. So, a massively experienced team. 
understand GT cars. And the combination has been, as you can see, a very successful one because they're leading the team's championship and they're also leading the driver's championship. So Nico Muller is back out on track. The top three in the session are all on track, actually. Muller, Miney and uh, Rockenfeller. And an advantage of 0.169 seconds for Muller, but there's nothing really to choose between Miney and Rocky. Nine thousandths of a second apart. Nor Lucas Degrassi, who's only further five thousandths adrift. So 14 thousandths between second, third and fourth. Miney, Rockenfeller and Degrassi. And then another tenth and a half back is Kelvin van der Linde in fifth place. Esteban Moot has just improved on his previous lap. A very low one minute 40. And that's still almost a second and a half adrift. Still Esme Orki in the pits on board camera this weekend for Sophia Florsch then. I'm talking about Le Mans and she had an experience of uh, Le Mans. Ultimately unsuccessful, bad luck with uh, a back marker and a crash, but a great experience for Sophia, who's still only 20 years of age, from Grenvolt in Bavaria, and has already competed in FIA Formula 3, Formula Regional Europe, European F3 at Macau, of course, where she had that horror crash three years ago, and started her single-seater career in ADAC F4. That was a British touring cars last weekend, where uh, there were more excellent races from Ginetta Juniors and reminded of the fact that uh, she spent some time, part season, six years ago, Sophia, in the British Championship, the Ginetta Junior Championship for teenage racers. She became the youngest ever racer to win in that category. Still, she holds that record with two wins around the fastest track in the UK, Thruxton. And she's certainly got bravery in abundance. You have to, to win at Thruxton, trust me. So. Kelvin van der Linde on board, wrestling the uh, steering wheel a little bit. And news coming through uh, from Thomas Voigt at, at uh, Sportsline that Lucas de Grassi is going to have to sit out the rest of the session with a problem. So, a problem with the car, and Lucas de Grassi doesn't sound like he's going to go back out. Fourth at the moment. Had those test laps here recently, and he's already put well only seven laps in the session, but there were a couple of good ones in there, which have got him up to fourth place. Could be a very useful backup for this man this weekend. That's certainly a key advantage that he's got over the likes of Marco Vip. He's got drivers like Mike Rockenfeller, Sophia Porsche, and now Lucas De Grassi that can help him out if needed in the race. However, if you're a solo entry in the team, like Marco Wittmann is for Team Volkenhorst, then you're all on your own. That will not bother him, though. Marco Wittmann has that experience of winning already two titles in 2014 and 2016. Hasn't had a car to compete for a few seasons, but now he has. And you have to be impressed as well. Quite a few DTM experts that, of course, have had to get to grips with these new style of cars, having stepped from Class 1 to GTs. But Marco has made the transition better than anybody, really, that's in that category. Done a superb job. That's uh, him and Lucas Auer at the end of the uh, previous race, and Liam Lawson as well, uh, how much they're enjoying these cars. Because if you raced in Class 1 like Lucas Auer and Marco Wittmann did, yes, the cars aren't as quick as they were, but the racing, arguably, I would certainly argue, is fantastic this year. Absolutely brilliant racing, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, and they agreed, all of them. Now, Liam's racing Formula 2 cars, but he said, I love the racing in this. It's great, it's wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, and when you pull off a move, it's a proper move. There's no electronic gizmos to help you. It's all about your line through the corner, your bravery on the brakes, your skill in outwitting your opponent. It's proper wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, and they are all loving driving these cars. And, well, you've got this shootout for the championship with two weekends to go, hotting up to be a real thriller. And that is in no small part due to the fact that you've had all these different manufacturers. Some have strengths and weaknesses. Some go better at some circuits. Some go better at others. You've got a real good mix of drivers, ex-DTM experts from Class 1 era, GT experts coming in. 
youngsters coming in with no previous experience of drumming anything with the roof over them, and it's been a fantastic mix that we've had. With these seven different winners, wins for Ferrari, wins for BMW, Audi, Mercedes so far, podium for Lamborghini, they've all been up there. It's been brilliant, and I think it's going to be a fantastic final couple of weekends, really looking forward to seeing out how it pays off. Only one of them can win it in the end, but you'd argue they case for all of them, wouldn't you, being potential winners, deserved winners. We'll just see how it all pans out. It's not all about skill and judgment. There's a thousand things to go wrong. The cars, it's a team sport. Team has to play their part. The pit stops, the strategy, and what about the luck as well? You can have all of the above ticked off, but if you don't have much luck, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. That can uh, ruin your championship as well. Lucas Hour then that uh, very, very nice driving race too at Assen. All eyes are on the championship contenders, but you see it can sometimes be a dark horse that comes in and steals their thunder. And it was a dominant race victory, really, from the 26-year-old uh, Austrian to take his sixth win in the DTM. And adding his name to the list, got up to second place with that lap as well, 138.631. So he and his teammate, Philippe Ellis, both going pretty well. Our second, seventh place for Ellis, who's still in the pits. Most drivers on track. And Dev Gore's gone back out as well, I noticed. So Dev Gore uh, managed to get the car repaired, well, fixed. I'm not sure if he went off or it was just a technical problem that pulled him off the road, but possibly the latter. And he's uh, been repaired now and he's back in the session. But we've got Miney in the pits, Degrassi in the pits, and we know not going back out from the team. Haupt in the pits, Florsch in the pits, and Esme Hawkey still in the pits, I suspect, with a problem, because she hasn't been out and completed a full lap as yet still. Another warning for track limits at Turn 1, and another one for Nico Muller. Personal best first set for Lucas Arrow on this one, 21.63 seconds. 21.603 is the best through there for Kelvin van der Linde. So this is a good start to the lap for Lucas Auer, who's already up to second, and he was only 34 thousandths of a second adrift. Second sector is a 48.56. That's a tenth down on the best second sector time set by Arjun Miney. And he's still going to be there or thereabouts when they're all quite fine. Those extra few thousandths in that last sector, which takes around 31 seconds to get through. You'll find out he's just about to make his way to the penultimate corner at turn 16, heading for the final turn. You can see him coming back towards the commentary box, takes a nice line in, runs over the curb, but doesn't run too wide, gets the power down as early as he can, sprints for the line. Lucas Howard goes over the line, and the time is a 1.43.012. He backed off at the end, so I think he lost perhaps that a little bit too much time in the middle of the lap, backed it off and fires it up for another go. Way out wide there for Timo Glock. Four Audis in the top six at the moment. First, fourth, fifth and sixth. Two Mercedes in there, though, of Aaron Miney in second and third. And best Ferrari still Alex Albon, who's in the pits currently, with ninth place and a 139.288. Esteban Moot keeps creeping up the order. The Lamborghini goes uh, 11th, 139.307. That's on Avril trying to move up the order as well. He's 16th at the moment. His best is 139.5. But that's much better. Eighth place, 139.1, finds four tenths of a second as he carries the speed out of turn one. See Arjun Miney back out there as well. He's just gone past the commentary box. So quickest driver on track at the moment is Vance on Abril with that 139.1. But you've got Esteban Moot, 139.3, 139.4s for Glock in there as well. Uh, Marvin Dinkston this weekend in the number 18 team at Muka Motorsport Mercedes Experience GT race. And he's coming in, but he's not as a guest driver. He's as a, officially a replacement driver, so he will be able to score points. There's something you've got to keep an eye on over these last couple of weekends. Uh, who does and doesn't qualify for scoring championship points? Because as we saw at Assen, that can uh, affect what points the championship front runners actually get. You might finish out of the top 10, but still be able to score points if there are one or two guest drivers ahead of you. So something well worth uh, keeping on top of that. But uh, officially, Marvin Dinkst will be in for points. 
Max Booth, who's done the whole season so far. Uh, he has replaced here at Hockenheim this weekend. Five minutes to go then. That's on Avril, 139.106. And looking to improve on this lap as well. Could get into the 138s with this. That would get him into the top six. And even higher up the order than he already is. So through he goes, 138.49. It's an excellent lap from Batson Avro. He goes straight to the top of the times. So 138.490, a tenth quicker than Nico Muller. And best in the last sector. He was a tiny bit down in the uh, first and second sectors. We made it all up at the end of the lap. He was very close to the absolute best in sectors one and two. But he really nailed sector three with a 31.090 really fighting the wheel there on that high-speed thrilling ride through the mobile one curve on the brakes then into turn 13 running back parallel to the start finish straight now as you go into the final sequence of corners and into the penultimate turn carrying the Audi out over the rumble strips kiss the curve on the inside fighting the wheel all the time though isn't he a bit of a wild ride that. Kelvin van der Linde puts a decent lap in though, 139.2, which is only three tenths away from his best lap of the session, which is so far 138.942. And stays in seventh place. Good middle sector for Vance on Avril, but he was a tenth down in the first sector. Could be another good lap though from the HR team, Mercedes driver. There he is. Hard to mind, he's had a good start to the lap as well. In fact, it's quicker than Vance on Avril on this lap. So Mine, he's down to fourth place now. Could get himself back up into the top three on this lap if he ends it well. Vance on Avril, though, will cross the line first. Over he goes, 138.7. So 138.7 is three tenths down on his best. Here's Arjun Miney, though. This could be his best lap of the session, potentially. So far, it's a 138.766, and he smashes it. Finds four tenths of a second, goes back to the top of the times and whips the car out through turn one. And over the curves at Nord Curve up. On board with uh, Sophia Floor, she's currently in 17th place. Looking to get into the 139s and she could do it on this lap because she's had a personal best through set to one of 22.059 seconds. So to put that into perspective, through the first sector, she's four tenths down on a teammate, Kelvin van der Linde, who's quicker than anybody at the, so far at the start of the lap, but Miley has the rest of the lap sorted now. He's quicker than anybody in sector two and sector three. 45.4 is the best sector two time. So she's lost seven tenths there, four tenths in the first sector. At the moment, she's 1.7 seconds adrift. And it's going to be a similar lap time, I would say. A low one minute 40. Fair. Another driver, though, of course, learning all about DTM and these type of cars. With a great team, though, crosses the line. And it's a good effort. It's the best, actually, because she has a really good final sector. Personal best, and that puts her into the 139s now. 139.974. She found just over a tenth of a second on that lap. It's the middle lap, part of the lap, the middle sector, which is the longest sector, where she's losing more or less half a time compared to the fastest drivers in the session so far. So we've got seven now in the 138s. Miney, Avril and Mully are top three. Our fourth, Rockefeller fifth. Degrassi with a problem, having only done seven laps in sixth place. Kelvin van der Linde in seventh. Philip Ellis is just coming to the pits. Eighth on a low 139, 139.069. Daniel Hankadea up into ninth place now, 139.170. Alex Alban, 139.288 in 10th place with exactly one minute to go. And Kelvin van der Linde on a longer run here, but the longer run is still a quick one. Keeps the speed up there. He is absolutely nailing it coming out of uh, turn 12, mobile one curver, just kissing the gravel trap. Carries the speed bravely then on the way through that left-hander at turn 13 through 14 and 15. Just a little rise, little bump as you hit it. Go over that and then into the final two corners. Just watching come out of the final turn on the kerbs, two wheels over the kerbs, but not four, so he's fine, over the line he goes, and that's another decent lap, 138.977. That's 7.4 rather, which is uh, within a few hundreds of a second of his best, which was 138.942. So keeping the speed up, comes up to Hubert Hout's Mercedes and has to stand on the brakes as Hubert comes out right in front of him at turn one. 
one of the quickest Avril's in the pits. Kelvin van der Linde's lap has been ruined on this one. Might be a bit of a glitch against his average. That's the famous parabolica as they head flat out through there and then down towards this really heavy braking zone. The chequered flag has now come out as those two cars make their way out of the Spitzgera and up towards the flick at turn seven, the right-hander on the brakes again, then down into the tight turns eight and nine, double left sequence, 90 degree right at turn 10, and then you're two thirds of the way around the lap. Max Scotts has been asked to respect track limits at guess which corner, turn one. 11th place for Max, but you've got the top 13 split by nine tenths of a second on a 1 minute and 38, 1 minute 39 lap. That's very, very tight indeed. So Arjun Mine, it looks like he's going to top the times at the end of the session. He's already come into the pits. Nobody else out there flying at the top of the order. So excellent job from Arjun, who will end the session just over a tenth clear of Vance on Admiral. And with Audi's having really dominated the top of the times for most of that session, it was in the end to Mercedes that were quickest. Miney and Abril were the best of the Audis. Nico Muller and uh, not much luck for his teammate, Dev Gore. But Nico Muller, maybe, maybe his luck. He's on the turn. Last year's championship runner-up. Would uh, dearly love to end the season in fine style. So good news for Team Rosberg. Nico Muller, best of the Audis in third place. The Mercedes about looking strong again in fourth. And then Audi's next up in fifth, sixth, and seventh. Rockenfeller, Degrassi, despite the fact he didn't do many laps. And Kelvin van der Linde. So here, confirmation of the times. Well done to Arjun Mining. 138.356 seconds, just over a tenth clear of Vance on Abril. Nico Muller, third. Lucas Auer, fourth. Mike Rockenfeller and Lucas Degrassi with very similar lap times. The two Team Ab Sports Line teammates ahead of their teammate and championship contender Kelvin van der Linde in seventh. Philip Ellis, Daniel Hunkadea. And Alex Albon rounding out the top 10 in that first 45-minute free practice session. And then we see in 11th place, Max Gotts. Esteban Moot kept improving. 12th in the end for him. Hubert Haupt pretty good in 13th. Timo Glock 14th. Marvin Dietz 15th. Sheldon van der Linde and Sophia Florsch next in 16th and 17th. Liam Lawson 18th. And then Marco Wittmann was 19th. Dev Gore didn't do a lap, nor did Esme Hawkey. Uh, right then, I hope you enjoyed our coverage of the first free practice session. Free practice two is coming up at 20 past three local time this afternoon. We'll see you then. Bye for now.